GM and Ford can't sell EVs. They're shutting down production, firing thousands of workers, and could even close their doors forever. Yes, you heard me right. More than $5 billion in losses, firing more than 1,000 workers in a single week. We could be looking at the biggest automotive car crash of the century. But why are Ford and GM not able to sell EVs? Are those EVs a scam? In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the crisis happening at Ford and GM and why buying an EV might be a big mistake right now. General Motors is about to close its doors and you might be shocked to know that their own CEO is killing the company. But before I tell you about that controversy, let's see how the number one American brand, Ford, is handling the EV race. Here's something I never thought I'd say. Ford is losing $36,000 on every EV they sell right now. Imagine selling something and losing more than the price of a brand new car on each sale. That's pretty crazy, right? The situation got so bad that Ford's electric vehicle division reported an operating loss of $1.3 billion in just one quarter. That's even worse than the previous quarter where they lost $1.1 billion. And compared to last year, it's more than double the loss. You can practically hear the alarms going off in Ford's headquarters. But why is this happening? Well, Ford says it's because of their continuous investment in EVs and some tough market dynamics. What they mean is that they're pouring money into developing these fancy electric cars, but the sales just aren't catching up. Plus, there's a twist. A lot of customers in North America are simply not willing to pay premium prices for these luxury EVs over gas or hybrid vehicles. And if I told you why they're doing this, you might never want to buy an EV. But more on this in a minute. And Ford's troubles don't stop there. Their beloved F-150 Lightning, the electric truck that was supposed to be a game changer, is now dead on arrival. They've stopped production and Jim Farley is now asking everyone to see Ford as a startup and ignore the losses they're making. Moving on to General Motors, here the situation is even worse. More than 1,000 workers fired in just one week, people getting killed due to their cars and EV losses left and right. Here's what exactly happened. First off, GM CEO Mary Barra is in the hot seat. She's making decision after decision and honestly, they're not all looking too great. The company's facing a bunch of problems, from EV sales going down the drain to issues with their self-driving car unit, Cruise. And what does Mary Barra do in the middle of all this? She's gone on record saying GM will not be lowering the prices and cheaper EVs under $30,000 are not going to be profitable, so she'll only focus on luxury EVs completely ignoring the common man. And get this, GM had this grand plan to build 400,000 EVs by mid-2024, but guess what? they're bailing on that big time. Why? Because the demand for their EVs is just not there. It's like throwing a huge party and no one shows up. Aww. In the third quarter of 2023, they made about 32,000 EVs, which is up 40% from the second quarter, but their sales only grew by 28%. The math just doesn't add up. They've even pushed back the production of their electric trucks, including the Chevy Silverado EV and the GMC Sierra EV, from 2024 to late 2025. It's a big red flag waving right in our face. But it's not just about slowing down. GM's making some tough calls. They're talking about cutting expenses, delaying factories, and even doing stock buybacks to make shareholders happy. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, Cruise. This robo-taxi unit was supposed to be a big win for GM, but it's turned into a nightmare. After a serious incident where a driverless vehicle killed a pedestrian, they've paused all operations. Top execs at Cruise have resigned, and there are layoffs coming. GM's financial situation is also taking a hit. The United Auto Workers strike cost them $800 million since it started. Wait till I tell you about how Ford is forcing dealers to spend thousands and millions of dollars just to be able to sell their EVs. Let's not forget the workers that are caught up in all this. GM's making some deep cuts. They're laying off about 1,300 workers as they wind down production of the Chevy Bolt and Camaro. The Orion assembly plant, where these layoffs are happening, is getting retooled for electric trucks, but that won't be up and running until 2028. Imagine being one of those workers, showing up every day, giving it your all, and then suddenly you're told you don't have a job anymore. Coming back to Ford CEO Jim Farley, here's something that'll make you raise an eyebrow. Nearly 50% of EV buyers are now trading in their EVs for hybrids. That's right, people are actually going back to gas and hybrid cars. It's like when everyone has tried that new trendy diet and then decided that it was burgers and fries that they wanted after all. 
In 2023, hybrids like the Toyota Prius were the stars of the show, making up 8.3% of car sales in the US, outshining the 6.9% for EVs. And the reason? Hybrids are more affordable and don't come with the extra baggage of charging woes. The average hybrid was priced at about $42,381, way lower than the $59,400 you'd have to cough up for an EV. In the second quarter of 2022, Ford dealers were selling 86.4% of their Mach-E inventory within 30 days. Fast forward to 2023 and that number plummets to just 27.7% despite having over twice as much inventory. Now the sales figures for the Mach-E fell by 90% from year over year, dropping from 10,941 vehicles to just 633. Ford's head of U.S. sales analysis, Eric Merkel, is trying to put a brave face on it, saying EV sales are up overall. But he also admits that a bunch of these unsold Mach-E's are stuck in dealer lots, not exactly flying off the shelves. The F-150 Lightning isn't faring much better. Last year, Ford was selling 70% of its Lightning inventory within 30 days. This year, only 35%. It's like everyone was excited about this electric truck, but now they're just giving it the cold shoulder. Just what is Ford's ambitious target here? To produce 600,000 EVs this year. But the kicker is they're expecting to lose at least $3 billion in the process. But wait, it gets crazier. Ford's asking their dealers to spend a million dollars just to become EV certified to sell these high-tech, yet seemingly unprofitable vehicles. Imagine being a dealer, shelling out all that cash, and then watching these EVs gather dust in your showroom. Now, here's where it gets really messy. Some Ford dealers, especially on the East Coast, are saying that Ford's production is way off from what customers actually want. People want a cheap EV with a range of more than 300 miles without useless technological gimmicks. But brands continue to ignore this. Ford and GM dealers are sitting on stockpiles of Lightnings and Mach-E's that they just can't sell. These dealers are so overwhelmed with EVs that they're actually turning down allocations from Ford. It's absolutely unheard of, like a kid saying no to candy. Ford's problem isn't just a blip, it's a sign of a bigger issue in the EV market. Even Tesla, the king of electric cars, is facing the same problem, having to cut prices and offer deals just to move their inventory. The real shocker is that the states with the biggest EV sales are now seeing the slowest growth. But wait, there's more. Remember those 200,000 Lightning reservations Ford bragged about? Well, turns out, 70% of those orders are just sitting there unfulfilled. By the time these Lightnings finally roll onto the lots, who knows if the customers will still be there? Ford's November sales tell a grim tale too. Overall, their sales are down by 0.5% compared to last year. Sure, EV sales hit a record high, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to the sales of their gas-powered vehicles. Their pickup trucks and SUVs, usually their strong suit, are also taking hits. The situation is so dire that Ford is cutting back on their EV investments. They've slashed $12 billion in planned expenditures, including scaling down their battery plant in Michigan and delaying production of another plant in Kentucky. The irony is that while Ford's EVs are struggling, their internal combustion engine vehicles are still their bread and butter. It's like everyone's excited about the future, but they're still clinging to the past. And then there's the human cost. The UAW strike at Ford's plants didn't just interrupt production, it led to temporary layoffs and a lot of uncertainty for workers. Even after the strike ended, it left a $1.7 billion dent in Ford's earnings, similar to GM. The new labor agreement, while beneficial for workers, is adding around $900 in cost per vehicle. It's a tough pill to swallow for a company already in a financial crunch. So what's the bottom line here? Ford and GM, like many other automakers, are learning the hard way that transitioning to EVs is not a cakewalk. The Biden administration is like a coach pushing for a new game plan with those strict emissions rules. They're basically saying, look, by 2032, we want 67% of all new cars to be electric. But should car makers be listening to politicians and not their customers? Are EVs a bad idea? Let me know down in the comments below. I just uploaded a video about groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Do check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.